Well, here I am, Wing Cave, checking it out. I apparently got on an earlier tour. I thought it started at 9. There's one at 840. I did see some buffalo on the way here, but I couldn't, uh, squirrel. I couldn't, uh, go see them because I wanted to make sure to get on the first tour before the crowds show up. That's important. You know, being one of the first people at the park has some advantages. So let's check out the wind caves. Maybe see a little bit of rustling in the bushes here. There's some wind that goes in and out of the cave. Does anyone know what causes the wind to do this? Yeah, pressure, barometric pressure. So the air pressure inside and outside of the cave uh, will determine which way that the air is blowing in and out of the cave. Um, so if we have high air pressure outside of the cave and low air pressure inside of the cave, um, then the air is going to be blowing into the cave. If it's low outside of the cave and high inside of the cave, then it's going to be blowing out. Uh, and I have my super scientific flagging tape here. We can put that right in front of the entrance here. And it's blowing out a bit today. So what does that mean about the air pressure? I don't open space for that air to flow as opposed to this little hole that it's being pushed out of a little bit faster here. But we will uh, feel it 54 degrees in the cave, so that'll be nice. Uh, the wind is how this uh, natural entrance was modernly discovered. A couple of cowboy brothers were riding through the prairie in the late 1800s. And heard a whooshing sound down here in the valley. They rode down and saw the bushes rustling over here. One brother went over and parted the bushes and the air blew his hat off of his head. Well, he said, that's pretty cool. There's an air conditioner in the middle of the South Dakota prairie on a hot summer day. So he rode into town, brought all of his friends back, parted the bushes, took his hat off of his head and threw it at the cave, expecting it to blow out. And this time the cave sucked his hat right into the hole. <laughs> Uh, so that's how they modernly discovered that the cave blows both ways and they later learned that it was from barometric pressure. Frostwork. That's one of our cave formations here. Can you see it back there? Alright, I'm going to give you guys a chance to take a look, uh, take a picture, and when you're ready, I'm going to send you on by me. You know, I thought a long time before putting out this footage. The main reason was when I was at the uh, wind caves, I didn't know if the footage would come out, and looking at it on the computer, it didn't look that good. I put it up on the TV, and it does look a little better, and, well, I might as well put it up somewhere so people can kind of see, and you'll see how it is down here in the cave. It was nice and cool, because it was actually a hot day that day, um, and the wind caves were a lot, a lot of fun. be golden in their heels. Oh, you're doing good. Yeah. 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 I was starting to wonder what qualifies as a big room. Slippery. <laughs> Slippery. The first thing I want to say is it's actually brighter down there than uh, it appears because your eyes adjust and you can actually see a lot better than what the, the camera does. I was really concerned, but I still think you kind of get the feel of how it was. Oh, that looks like... I guess that would be a big room. I didn't know if it widens a little bit. That's now considered the room. <laughs> And walking through it, it was uh, incredibly tight. Um, they give you a lot of stories of the backstories of like how they were found. Uh, I guess someone real early was also the uh, person who explored like several miles of it, and he did it through candlelight. And he would just have a rope, and he would just crawl in there, and he would crawl down through all the different areas, and they found it. I hope this comes out. Another one cave expert. Different camera, hopefully different help. 
What I was Get referring to back there is actually, when I was in New Zealand, we went to these glowing worm caves, where you go into these caves and you can see worms that are glowing. I tried to take some footage, but you know, you of course can't use flash or anything like that, so it never worked. It, like, it, it just came out pitch black, and I was concerned that it would be pitch black here, but I still think you can see a lot of the uh, conformity. Remind me again why I, be, I need to be on a diet more. This is height discrimination by Kate. <laughs> Apparently the, the limestone, because the water seeped down and kind of carved out the limestone, has something like, whatever, I don't, you can't really see, it's some kind of like box formation which uh, they have like 90% of the ones in the world because there's just only one other cave somewhere system elsewhere. There's a lot of interesting facts about this cave system. First, it's only 10% explored. I have something like 90% of it still has yet to be explored, and they're currently still exploring it. Now, in order to explore it, you have to be part of the, uh, whatever, National Spelunking Service or something like that. There's, a, there's an actual national affiliation of spelunkers who are busy exploring it slowly and surely. And when you go here, there's actually three levels, which can be all be accessed by elevator. The uh, first level, you go down like just a story, and then you just like walk around and you get back on the elevator. The, the second one is you uh, go down and you walk, you go down to the first level and then you walk and you walk down a little further. The third one is obviously, it's just length of time really when it comes down to it, of how long you're walking. I also did get the message because there were some uh, couple thin areas where you know I was uh, kind of touching both sides of the walls and that's always a little concerning and kind of you know gives you a little poke to say like okay you know you should be doing something about that.
get too bothered by the, the you know having to like bend over to in order to get through some of these areas. I'm used to the height discrimination. But I think you can see here that it's actually really exciting. Some of the rooms are actually pretty subsident and sizable. Like where you, you can put like 50 people in some of these rooms and you can like walk around and see all the different areas. They light up a lot of the places. A lot of them, you know, so you can walk a whole lot better. It's kind of, it's kind of also scary to think that someone actually did a lot of this exploring <laughs> by candlelight. You know, having a candle, and actually, apparently, even in the 18, in the early 1800s and 1900s, they used to take tours down here because they actually opened up one of the caves so that people could walk in because the original entrance was just so small, and you people could walk in, and everyone would have to be carrying like basically a candle in order to walk through there. I mean, those are kind of like brave souls there. In one area, they actually do turn out all the lights, so it becomes completely and totally pitch black. That right there is a, a, a kind of a, an amazing experience that, uh, you know, it's just completely pitch black. And you, and as for how deep this tour gets, I think they said something like um, 200 feet underground. It goes pretty deep. Apparently it keeps going down for another like uh, I forget what they said, probably like 600 feet or whatnot. Because if you go down 600 feet, apparently there's a um, underwater lake that's down there. I even asked, it's like, are you concerned about rain? And they actually said, no, they're not too concerned about rain. I mean, it would have to really pour, and maybe the bottom levels will fill up with water, but it never gets up high enough to uh, to actually threaten where the tours are. And it just, if it's raining a lot outside, you just see, see more dripping from the walls. You don't see any rushing current or anything like that, so <laughs> it's perfectly safe. And I'm kind of glad that I did eventually put all this footage up, up so at least I can look at it. And, you know, I just don't want it only sitting on my computer and then all, and all of a sudden accidentally lose it. Exiting the caves. The caves are nice, the naves are interesting, they're big, so kind of an enjoyable tour. I'm really hoping some of the video comes out because I would hate to have a worm cave uh, repeat. Worm cave, if uh, I was in a, a cave where they had glowing worms and none of it came out because it was just too dark. So we're hoping for a little, a little better. <laughs> Apparently, uh, at the base, there's a water, there's a lake like 500 feet further, like completely 500 feet further down. There's a big, like, that's where the water table level is, and that would have been cool if they had gotten down there, but they haven't explored all the caves just yet.